Should you be playing the free hit chip in double game week seven? Well, in today's video, we're going to be answering that question. Before we get into the actual team, I wanted to discuss whether or not it is actually worth playing that chip. So I thought we would have a little bit of a discussion in this first part of the video. If you want to go straight to the team, I will leave it down in the timestamps below. So you can skip straight to that if you're already looking for that. But if you're yet to be convinced, let me do some talking. Let me potentially convince you to take a pun on a free hit in double game week seven. Now, the first point that I'm going to raise is that it's easy to bring in those double game week players. Obviously, Burnley and Luton are the kind of doubling up of this week and it's not a great double is it to be honest arguably Luton's is the better side of that they take on Everton and Burnley and Burnley they play obviously Luton and Newcastle so it's not really a good double for them arguably the only players that we want to have in our teams are from Luton and probably only looking at getting one or two now with this kind of free hit chip that you can play Obviously, this is only for one game week, meaning that after this week, all those pesky double game week players like Luton, you know, Morris, Kabore, they will be gone from your teams. You will not have to make a future transfer to get them out. I think if you play on a wild card in game week eight or nine, I don't think it's as big a deal. But if you're like me, planning to hold it till around game week 19, it is going to be a little bit of an issue trying to get these double game week players back out of the side. Whereas if you play the free hit chip in this week, they're only going to be here for one week. You can take advantage of this good fixture run and never have to think about them again. I think that's really good because longer term, we do not want to be holding these kind of Luton or Burnley assets. The fixtures aren't there and they're also not great teams and not, you know, overall really good point scoring players consistently within the game. So I definitely think they are kind of a very short term option and that would suit the free hit kind of strategy. The other point as well that I wanted to make is there are some amazing fixtures this week, especially for teams that I feel like we don't have a lot of players in. West Ham obviously playing Sheffield United off the back of their 8-0 thrashing. That's a fixture that I'd feel like a lot of us don't have kind of West Ham players in. We want to be taking full advantage of that fixture because Sheffield United look very ropey with that as well West Ham are a brilliant team from set pieces. Sheffield United have conceded the most goal from set plays as well this season, conceding two against Newcastle at the weekend. And with James Ward-Prowse and David Moyes' prowess towards set plays, that to me is a match made in heaven. Everton as well, another team who have a really good fixture. They play Luton at home off the back of an impressive performance, a 3-1 win over Brentford as well. We want to be like, you know, trying to get some Everton players in there. Tarkowski he looked impressive. Dominic Calvert-Lewin scoring his goal as well. So again, another team with one good game week that we might want to be taking advantage of. Arsenal as well is another team that I feel we don't have a lot of players in. Personally, I just have Saka. I know some people might have Saliba and Saka. Maybe Gabriel still kicking about as well. That's probably the only two players that you've got in there. But, you know, Arsenal, Bournemouth way is a really good fixture. Bournemouth yet to win a game in the Premier League so far this season. You'd imagine Arsenal are high favourites for that one. So, again, another fixture that we wanted to kind of target with this double game week. And then finishing up Newcastle as well. Like we said, that 8-0 win. A lot of us did kind of move to one or two defenders, maybe looking to bring in Trippier or Botman already. But maybe we want a Callum Wilson. Maybe we want an Anthony Gordon for Burnley away as well, which would be a great great fixture yet again to target. On the caveat as well, you do have Liverpool versus Spurs this week. Manchester United assets haven't looked great either. They're playing Crystal Palace who notoriously are a very rigid and sturdy defence under Roy Hodgson. So I definitely think there is massive scope and massive gains to be had in this double game week. And if I've convinced you, stick around because we're going to move on to that free hit team. And starting off our team in goal, we have gone for Ariola. Sheffield United at home is a brilliant fixture for a goalkeeper who's been picking up constant kind of points over the opening couple game weeks despite West Ham not picking up a clean sheet. I think it might also be worth potentially looking to target a West Ham defender as well with their good set piece record and like I said at the start of the video Sheffield United conceding the most goals from set play so I definitely think a defender is needed from West Ham and maybe someone like Egard or Zuma could be really good options to have to go over the top of Ariola and potentially play Rea who is on our bench with Bournemouth way but for this team we've gone with Ariola. he's been a very constant like source of points over the opening couple game weeks you'd imagine as well West Ham will keep a clean sheet in that game moving into the back line we do have Botman from Newcastle and we've also gone 
for Kieran Trippier as well. Two excellent defenders in that game at the weekend against Sheffield United. Obviously, Botman scoring the goals and Kieran Trippier getting himself back into the points. You imagine Burnley at home, they're going to be looking for another solid performance from them. You imagine a clean sheet as well. And if we can get some attacking returns, hopefully more from Trippier than Botman, because I would not be expecting Botman to score every single week. But a double clean sheet with our free hit would be absolutely amazing. Burnley haven't been overly impressive as well. They're still missing their top goal scorer as well from this season due to suspension. That is Lyle Foster. The other guy who came in to replace him didn't look quite up to kind of Premier League standard. You would imagine Newcastle comfortably win this game yet again keep a clean sheet as well with the double Newcastle boys and if Kieran Trippier can pick up a, like another assist maybe Botman gets another goal that would be absolutely immense so yeah those two starting off our back line moving on to our final defender we've gone for a free at the back to fill kind of more attacking places it is Kabore from Luton obviously we're taking advantage of this double game week Everton and Burnley he has got the highest expected goals involved amongst all Luton defenders I think even midfielders as well when I uh, took a look at that we obviously spoke about this double it's not the greatest but if you could potentially pick up one clean sheet maybe in that Burnley game that would be absolutely immense maybe you could grab himself another jammy assist again he's a player that I do want like I wouldn't really want him in my team longer term he's currently in mine but he's just going to be sat third sub every single week and I feel if you have no Luton players he him and another player we're going to come on to talk about are going to be the ideal ones for this free hit draft like I said I won't be expecting too much out of this Luton defense but you know we're going to try and take full advantage of this double game week moving into the midfield starting off we have gone for Phil Foden Wolves away is a great fixture for Manchester City and I think Phil Foden has been extremely good over the opening couple game weeks a player who's definitely caught my eye and I always like to target City players when I do go for the free hit chip personally I'm a man who likes to avoid Pep Roulette I don't kind of go into that gamble I didn't go for Julian Alvarez this week as I just think there's so much risk and so much rotation that can take place that it's just sometimes not worth it. Obviously City and Newcastle do play in the Carabao Cup in midweek. They actually play each other, which is a really difficult fixture. So if Phil Foden plays quite a lot of that game, I potentially would be looking at other replacements. Obviously, we've got Tarkowski, White, Anthony Gordon, who had a brilliant performance against Sheffield United and has started the season so brightly as well. So there's plenty of other options that you could go for in that midfield spot. But for me, I always like to have a little cheeky gamble with one of the City players on a free hit, especially when they've got a good fixture like Wolves away. I've not overly been convinced by Wolves' kind of opening performances. So I definitely think Foden is a player that I would like to have if I was going to hit that free hit button. Moving on to our midfield, our next midfielder, sorry. And it is the West Ham double up. We've gone for James Ward Prowse and we have gone for Jared Bowen. Now, off the back of watching that Newcastle performance, there was so much space to exploit for Newcastle. There was so much time as well. The set pieces, like we've already spoke about with Trippier and Botman and Ariola as well. This, the kind of the set pieces that Newcastle were able to exploit, you imagine West Ham are going to have an absolute field day. James Ward-Prowse, set piece maestro, we all know what that man is capable of. Started his West Ham career super bright over the past five game weeks as well. Two goals, three assists for him. Jared Bowen has four goals already as well for the season. You imagine he is only going to add to that total against Sheffield United. Their confidence is going to be rock bottom, ladies and gentlemen. West Ham have started the season quite brightly. Obviously, didn't go quite to plan at the weekend, but you know, Liverpool away, it's not one of the easiest fixtures on the calendar is it Anfield is always a difficult place to go Liverpool seem to make that place a fortress most seasons so yeah not the greatest of results, but I think West Ham will back bounce, bounce back Sorry, with a very strong performance against Sheffield United. That's why we've gone for the double up of midfield. Two great assets who have the potential to haul in this game week. Finishing up our midfield is Bakayo Saka, her player who was very impressive in the North London derby. Now, I was speaking to an Arsenal friend and fan earlier and he was telling me there is potentially some issues with Saka maybe missing some games he might miss the midweek game you know there's kind of a little bit of kind of consensus that there might be a little bit of an injury kind of situation happening I don't know anything 
like further than that just from conversations talking to him i haven't really seen anything come out in the media so i think it could just be a little bit of speculation but i just wanted to put that out there at this point in time bournemouth way great fixture for arsenal bournemouth yet to pick up any wins in the premier league arsenal just seem to be in cruise mode not absolutely battering teams yet but starting to just you know pick up slow like slow wins they're not conceding too much in terms of xg conceded they're creating a good amount of chances as well and i do think they will eventually start to put some goals past people it is kind of a matter of time before these top quality assets that they have in their team is going to absolutely smash someone and Bournemouth away might be that fixture on penalties as well which is always a great asset I absolutely love to look for and you know that with me ladies and gentlemen moving on to our front line we obviously do have Erling Haaland in here I'm not going to say any more on him you all know what he's about I think for me, even if I was on this free hit, I probably still would look to Captain Haaland, maybe Morris or maybe one of the West Ham boys. But yeah, I think I'd stick safe and still go with Haaland. Moving on to our second striker, I kind of already a little bit teased it there. It is Carlton Morris with his double, scored in game week six with his very, very lucky, fortunate penalty that Luton were given in that game. Obviously, a lot of people are kind of clambering to get to him this game week. I think if you, you know, hadn't already bought him in he's not a really good long-term asset with the fixtures for Luton and them being a real lack in front of goal I think he has less than one uh, in terms of non-penalty expected goals so you know not really good in front of goal he's very much reliant on his set p on his penalty sorry but you imagine he is going to at least score one goal or you'd hope for one goal as well in that double Everton and Burnley both pretty shaky defenses so hopefully you can grab a goal maybe another fluky penalty who knows but I definitely think he's a player that you need to have for game week seven and if you've not got him and you you know you're on this free hit that makes perfect sense to take advantage because then you've not got to worry about that headache a little bit later on right finishing up our side our final player is Dominic Calvert-Lewin came off the bench for Beto at the weekend scored against Brentford I think he will be rewarded with a start against Luton it's a fantastic fixture even when Wolves went down to 10 they still look pretty comfortable in the game against Luton I don't feel they put them under any kind of real pressure within that game it wasn't a convincing performance by Luton and I definitely think a more organized side with 10 men like Everton that seem to be just starting to click into gear you know they've had really good xg throughout the season obviously that first game of the season absolutely battered Fulham the other performances as well have been quite encouraging and if DCL can keep himself fit at least for game week seven while we've got him in this team I think he could be a really good option potentially bags one or two goals it's a big claim it's a big shout but you've always got to go for some spicy differentials on your free hits and I think DCL could be that for this week right let's have a quick run through of the bench Raya White we've already spoke about Arsenal have the best XG conceded in the league by a country mile so definitely if if you don't fancy going for Ariola or Kabore, then those two do pose themselves as really good options. Tarkowski, Luton at home is a really good fixture for Everton, like we've said. Obviously, he scored and got an assist. And West Ham, no, Everton, sorry, have really good uh, underlying data when it comes to attacking set plays. One of the highest for XG created from set plays. So definitely a player that could be involved in future kind of set piece goals for that side. Obviously, something that Sean Dyche looks to exploit within teams as well. So maybe James Tarkowski does slide himself into that defense. And we already spoke about Anthony Gordon potentially being in there. Obviously, a goal and assist for him. Harvey Barnes's injury as well probably means he's going to get quite a few minutes as well. So you would imagine he starts in game week seven. That was the free hit team. Let me know what you think of it down in the comments section below. If you've got any questions about your team or double game week seven in general, leave them down below and I will try to answer as many as possible. But thank you very much for watching today, ladies and gentlemen, and enjoy the rest of your day.